within the Counseling Educational Psychology and Special Education Department, which we refer to as SEPSI, um, one of the mandates for me coming in as a new chairperson five years ago was uh, to, to really realize our values in terms of um, one of which being inclusion and shared governance in, in how we do the work that we do. And so thinking about shared governance, uh, that, that involves um, bringing in stakeholders to major decisions um, re regarding the, the, departmentals, the department's missions and its operations. But when you combine that with inclusion, it's also this sense of um, the, the way I refer to it more colloquially is um, we don't make decisions about people without including those people. And structurally as a department, we did not have a formal mechanism for including students in, in those student relevant um, decisions and, and sort of operational processes and so forth. So we, we did have some background in, for example, including students in search committees um, um, in, in other type of initiatives, but they were one-offs. They were subject to whoever was leading the particular initiative um, and the, <clears throat> the support of that particular group. So the question was, how do we, how do we really realize this idea of having an inclusive shared governance within our department that gives voice to students regarding students' experiences? Um, one way to do that was, was, of course, thinking about it in terms of a formal committee. Where that gets challenging in a department like ours is that um, our department is really an umbrella over five very different program areas. And so we have uh, special education, rehabilitation counseling, school psychology, educational psychology, educational technology, and measurement quantitative methods. <clears throat> the details aren't important, but the idea that um, graduates of one program do not necessarily look like graduates of another. Um, the degrees that are offered, we have, one pro we have programs that are only doctoral programs. We have other programs that are <clears throat> doctoral and masters. And then we have other programs that are doctoral masters and undergraduates. And so just to, to talk about the needs quote of the students really required a more fine grained sense of representation in, in that um, our, our students are not unimodal. They're, they're in fact um, represent very different interests depending on what program we're talking about. And so, how do you can create a representative committee that is inclusive, that gives voice to, to all sort of um, stakeholders while at the same time <clears throat> not creating something that's so unwieldy where you've got 20 people on the same committee that um, you can't organize, you can't ever find time to meet and then you can't make any decisions because it's too large. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's the context for what we, we then did was to, as a department, agree that um, our status quo is not acceptable. Um, we, we did not think it was acceptable to not have student voices. And that we, and then to um, create a shared vision of, so we want student voices, but um, we're not exactly how to do that in a way that again, doesn't become unwieldy. <clears throat> so the, the process that we went by doing then is to create um, two levels of piloting. So they could start with the mandate that all programs must have an elected student representative participate in their governance. That was the sort of edict that we all agreed on. What that looked like in a given program was allowed to vary. Um, how exactly they ran their elections is allowed to vary. So um, within special ed, they would, where we have an undergraduate multiple master's programs and a doctoral program. They have um, an undergraduate representative and they have one graduate student rec representative. Sometimes it's a doctoral student, sometimes it could be a master's student. Um, in another program in QM that's only doctoral student, they have only a doctoral representative. But again, without going to the details, the big idea is that the programs were not free to say, we're not gonna have representative we decided that that was the expectation, what it looked like and what those duties then um, played out were defined at the program level. The other level of experimentation then was, was piloting what we call the Student Advisory Committee or the SAC that would 
um, one representative from each of the program would come together to meet with the, the chairperson on um, at initially a monthly basis. Um, and the goal there is, is access and voice in the sense of if you want to ensure that the students have um, voice, then you need to elevate that in a way that they get to the person who is um, able to um, you know, make change by way of distributing resources and um, starting initiatives and that type of things. And so um, the SAC pilot version began meeting with me monthly um, during the first year. After the first year, we decided that that was uh, a little too frequent and we moved to an every other month um, format. And that's the one that um, we, we've ultimately settled on. Um, we've created an agenda that's driven by the calendar in the sense of we are our sort of fixed topics are associated with the, the things that are going on at different times of year. So if it's admissions time, if it's the annual review time, if it's um, exam support, et cetera. Um, but then there's always the opportunity for the students to bring agenda items as well. Um, the last step was how do we, how do we formalize this in a way that um, uh, if, if there's different chairperson, if there are different people running the programs, that this would still be um, institutionalized in a way that it would carry on into the future. And so that last step was, was writing this down in a way that we could incorporate it into our bylaws of having this be a standing committee within the, the, um, within the department, defining what those roles are, how frequently they meet, and, and who they meet with, with the chairperson, and then um, making, putting in writing this expectation that program governance would also include a student um, 